Yeah. Hey, uh, I know that she's, um, uh, Tom's seeing the doctor today, so she said she was going to try to uh, to catch it while she could. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to give it like one more minute. It's 12.02. We respect everybody's time, but we also know how you got to get off a phone call, get on a phone call, make all your transitions. So we're going to give it one more minute, and then we are going to get started. All right, John, let me try to get you situated. Uh, ask to unmute and ask to start video. Okay, John Mortal, I did both of those. There he is. There he Hi, is. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so Denise, the, um, the only one I'm missing on video is you. If you want to be on video, let me know and I can try to make that happen. Just chat me. Uh, if not, there she is. Perfect. Where are we, got you, you. we got you. Okay. All right. So, um, Jason, you're muted. Do you need me to unmute you? There we go. Okay, got it. There we go. Okay. All right. So it is 1203 and we are going to get started. Welcome everybody. This is fantastic virtual selling. And today we're going to talk about how you can be more effective selling using technology. <laughs> I want to use I have to because of COVID. So before I launch into all of that, first I want to introduce you. We have an amazing group of people that have come together today, all organized by the one, the only, the incomparable realtor extraordinaire, Judy. Hey. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad this was recorded. I'm going to go back and listen. I know. I know. So Judy, why don't you kick us off by telling us all why we are here today, the bigger reason why, and introducing some of our guests that we have on the screen at the moment. Okay. So I am here because um, in 1993, Diane Leone and I met each other when we were working together. And we were both selling advertising for Jacksonville Magazine. And we just hit it off. And I just knew we were going to become fast friends. And so she and Tom are actually Alan and I's oldest couple friends. And we've traveled with them. And Diane and I have done a lot of business over the years. And then in 2018, uh, Tom was diagnosed with cancer. And she and I uh, started the GoFundMe. And then he went into remission and then his cancer came back this year. And it was right in the middle of some of the, some of the, um, the shutdown that was going on. So he couldn't get some of the treatments. And I just said, I got to do something. And so I got, I got uh, Kathy Timmons and Denise Patricolo and I together and said, let's see if we can't do something to help them with some of the medical bills and because we love them. And I'd like to tell people that we love people because of who we are and God put it in my heart. And um, so far we've raised about $3,000 just with your event, Meredith, which is phenomenal. Amazing. And Denise said to me at lunch, she said, what about Meredith? Do you know her? And I says, well, I know her, but I don't like, I don't, I can't say I've ever had a glass of wine with her or anything. And I just reached out and I mean, it was instant. Yes. What can we do? So that's why we're helping someone who needs it. And you, the, the end result is going to be fabulous because as I said earlier, I, I watch almost all of your town halls and you're just incredible. And I think it's going to be good, but that's why we're doing it. That's right. That's a good one. All right, so why don't you uh, introduce some of our sponsors that we have on the screen with us here. And okay. uh, if any of you guys want to say something or contribute, feel free. Okay, well, first would be um, Denise because she's the one who said, hey, do you think Meredith Oliver would do this? And <laughs> got us in this. So. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Denise has a very tender heart. So Denise, say something and quickly tell them about Ashton. Well, I would like to say, first of all, this lunch happened in a Mexican restaurant 
and there were margaritas involved. So <laughs> I ask you to look. You had margaritas, I did, and I was working. <laughs> restaurant, beware. Uh, no, seriously, thank you, Meredith. We we were uh, thinking of the best way to uh, raise money for uh, a wonderful cause, and uh, Meredith was amazing to step up to that. We're really excited about what we're going to learn today, and David Weekly is excited to be a part of that. Um, and, and yes, my, my son, um, Ashton, my youngest is turning seven on Friday and he got a, a nice gift from grandma, some money in the mail. And, um, he wanted to donate that to, uh, the Leonis as well. So, um, uh, that's what Judy is referring to with Ashton's kind donation. So he's not on the call with us today. He's in school. Thank God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. And then next, I would uh, call on uh, probably one of the best friends anybody could ever have, Kathy Timmons. She's the idea girl. And uh, we became fast, fast friends. And um, pretty much anything that we do, we kind of do it together. And so she just jumped on and helped us and sponsored also. So, Kathy, you say something. I think the only thing I have to say is, is I bought the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. As did I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm short. And, uh, and actually, it was Denise's idea to sell sponsorships. And so uh, that brings Jason in. Mm -hmm. Jason Kindler. Good guy. All around good guy. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Go. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I, I just, um, you know, want to say Jason Kindler, First Coast Mortgage Funding. Um, whenever uh, Denise and Judy and Kathy put something together, and I've, I've, uh, you know, I'm definitely uh, love to sponsor um, and help out because it's always for a good cause, and uh, and I'm interested in hearing what Meredith has to say today as well. So appreciate All you right. guys. All right. And then I would say um, Christy McCarthy, who has known Diane for quite a while uh, in the same industries, and she is just an all-around incredible, incredible good lady. Thank you. Are you talking about me? Or is it yes. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? Come on, don't be shy. You wouldn't have anybody <laughs> want to say, come on. Mm. No, I, um, I, I appreciate you, um, you know, all, all of your uh, hard work and I'm looking forward to the learning today and um, I'm uh, excited to be a part of this. So good job and thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. And then I know John Wardle's on the call and to know John Wardle is to love John Wardle. And because of his <laughs> incredible bride, I can say I got an IT guy because she's got an IT guy. So, John, I can't thank you enough. You are an incredible human being. We love you so much. So happy to help. And I, I'm unofficially the fourth birthday babe. <laughs> and, 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 and Judy would know what that means. But uh, I, we've known this group of women since uh, 2004. And uh, even though we're in Idaho now, we think the world of Diane and Judy and Kathy and uh, grateful just to be part of this. And the Brighton Homes team can listen in today as well. Nice. Outstanding. All right. And then we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, Judy, we've got um, Jennifer Sexton on oh, as well. Oh, wow. Let me ask, uh, let me try to get her on. There we go. Excellent. Jennifer. Do you, can we, there you are. I was trying to stay hidden, but thank oh, you. Oh, no. Not going to let you, not going to let you. We're glad that you're here. Well, you I'm so happy support. to participate. I've known Diane for almost 30 years. She was one of the very first people that I met when I moved to Jacksonville. We worked together in the radio industry. Love her, love Tom, would do anything to support them. And I too am looking forward to hearing you, Meredith. This, so <laughs> I'm going to unmute myself now. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, well. Thank you, all of you. Uh, Judy, I, that's everybody that I see on our panelist list. Okay. That's here. So uh, what I'm going to do now, actually, is I'm going to stop your videos. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. And I'm going to just get the slides going here. Just give me one second while I man the controls. Okay.
Let me share my screen and we will be off and running. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed, but the world changed. I think it was precisely March 12th, to be exact, that we all looked around and went, oh, that thing that's been going on over there across the ocean, it's like here now. And then the next thing we knew, uh, our local areas started closing and we couldn't open our model homes and we couldn't have virtual tours and our in-person tours and open houses and all these crazy things happened. And as a group, we were forced in real estate, whether you're in general real estate or in new home sales, we were forced to go virtual quickly. We had to do it. And for some of us, it was a pretty sharp learning curve. For others, you've been at it a while. So one of the things that's challenging about a, some, a program like this today is all of you are coming to it with different levels of experience. Some of you are better than me and could teach this class or even teach it better than I can. Others of you really are new to FaceTime on your iPhone and you're just getting started. So my goal is to hit right in the middle and those of you that are just getting started to kind of bring you up along and give you some confidence and those of you that are more experienced my goal is to give you some little advanced nuggets so that everybody's time gets used wisely today for nearly the last 20 years i know i couldn't possibly be that old it's because i have awesome beauty products I have been working in the new construction industry in the sales and marketing area. I'm very honored to lead a team of incredible digital marketing professionals uh, who we provide services to builders. Uh, I think that John at Brighton Homes and his team is definitely one of my most long-standing clients. We've worked with them for years and they aren't sick of us yet despite Alan, my husband Alan's politics and crazy wearing of orange, uh, the Brighton Homes team has put up with us for a long time and so have many other builders around the country and for that we're very grateful. So I don't, I'm not always live on air speaking. A lot of the times I'm right in the thick of things helping builders develop their marketing strategies. I know enough words that I filled up two whole books behind me. That's pretty cool, right? So, you know, it's, it's been a pleasure. I'm happy to be in the industry and I'm happy to have been working in it so long. What I like to say about myself is for the last 20 years, I've basically lived at this intersection of sales and marketing because it's right in that intersection that the magic happens. I mean, it's one thing to build beautiful websites for companies like a Brighton Homes or a Buffington Homes, but if nobody can find that website, then what's the point? So that's where our search engine optimization, our social media strategies come into play. But then at the other side of that sales and marketing intersection is the sales side of teaching salespeople and agents like yourselves, okay, so now what do we do? How do we convert all of that magical traffic into appointments, into contracts? Now, for many years, I did that in person at events like the Builder Show. But then COVID happened and the whole way that I deliver my education had to change just like how you had to change how you communicated and worked with potential buyers. So, I became the queen of Zoom. I've been using Zoom for years, but I have never used Zoom so much in my life as I have since March the 12th. And because I wanted to make sure I was good at it, I submitted myself through a rigorous testing program and certification program called a certified virtual presenter. I had to do a 45 minute live Zoom with an evaluator person on the other end who triple checked every single aspect, technical, delivery, background, lighting, audio. If a doorbell had rung or a dog barked, I would have failed the evaluation. It was insane. 
fortunately, I passed. And it taught me a lot about virtual communication, virtual presentations, virtual selling. Those are the tips I'm going to share with you today. Now, most of my career, I've been teaching this thing called fantastic fantastic sales and marketing. That's what the books are about. And that's where we put the fans first. We make it about them and not about us. So we make our websites, we make our email campaigns, we make our social media posts, we make it about the fans. But here's what I figured out about virtual selling. It's really no different. The same rules apply. It's not about you. So when you go to do your next Zoom meeting or your next FaceTime or whatever it is, whatever platform you're using, you want to think about the person on the receiving end of that visit, of that meeting, of that communication. What are they hoping to gain out of the time you're going to spend together? What do they need to learn? What do you want them to do differently after the conversation? You see, with every conversation, whether we have it in person in our model home or in person as you show listings, if you're in general real estate, or we have it virtually over technology, you want to think about how can I make this interaction about them? And that's the key. So when I was planning this today, I had to think about what do I think, what do I hope you want to learn from today? And what I would encourage you to do is please use the chat box to type in any questions or thoughts or ahas or whatever you have along the way. I'll periodically put my glasses on so I can actually read the screen. <laughs> and I will check over here and look in that chat box and make sure that I am on track. because. For me, as someone who's been teaching live students for all these years, adults in this industry, I think the hardest part of just talking to a webcam is I can't see you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm hitting the right notes with you. I don't have any feedback. I, don't, I can't see if you're taking notes. I can't see if you're nodding your head. I can't see you. So I don't know if you're sleeping right now, pretending to pay attention so your boss thinks you're learning, but honestly, you're getting your nap. I don't know if anybody else is a Seinfeld fan. Do you remember when George built the like nap cubby underneath his desk <laughs> and he would hide under there and sleep? during the middle of the work day, but they all like thought he was working. Yeah, that's what a lot of this virtual stuff is like. And that's what makes it kind of tough. Okay, so my first and, and main rule of thumb for you is you've got to make it about them. You have to make it about them. So again, asking yourself, what does this person need or want to learn today from me in this conversation? What do they need to understand? What are they hoping to gain? And that's where being clear about the purpose of the meeting prior to the meeting is going to be really important and really helpful to you. If you don't, make it about them. If you don't really focus on them, then they're going to ignore you. <laughs> this is why nobody replies to your email campaigns. This is why people don't respond to your social media posts. They're ignoring you because for some reason they perceive that what you're telling them is canned or salesy or it's about you and not about them. I mean, what we really end up caring about most is about ourselves. So, be careful because this will happen or they'll just be distracted and not really pay attention to your message or you may accidentally, worse, actually damage your brand with something. You try to go live on Facebook or you try to do whatever and the next thing you know, you're this Democratic senator. This is just from a few days ago, fresh off the presses, who ended up screaming the F word repeatedly into the Postmaster General Senate hearing when he was called upon to ask his question because he didn't think Zoom was working properly and he got flustered. 
this is not good virtual communication. <laughs> we don't want to do this, right? So lesson number one, you need to be acutely aware of when you are muted, unmuted, on camera, or not on camera. Okay, true story. Many, many years ago, when I was first starting, <laughs> I was just learning how to use GoToMeeting at that time. I hadn't discovered Zoom yet. And I was doing, I had to do monthly review calls with each of our clients, like Brighton, where we go over their numbers for their marketing that we were working on for that month. And we have this monthly call every month. And I was using GoToMeeting. Well, that particular day, I had a little break in between my go to meetings. So I ran over to the neighborhood fitness center. I got in some time on the old elliptical and I came back and landed on my desk at my desk just in time to start my go to meeting. I failed to realize my camera was on. So there I am, sweaty, uh, baseball hat, workout gear. Like none of these are things you associate with Meredith Oliver, right? But that wasn't that, it wouldn't have been that big a deal. We've all been there. We've all gotten back from the gym. I'm sure the builder probably would have overlooked it or, but I made it worse. You wanna know how? As soon as I realized that my camera was on, are you ready? Here's the reenactment. I did this. Oh. I dunked my head under my desk. <laughs> but the problem was, the camera was still on and my audio was on. And so out of my computer, I'm down like this. I got like one eye above my desk. I'm down like this. And I hear the builder, it was a Salt Lake City company, say to me, uh, Meredith, we can still see you. <laughs> At that point, I had no choice but walk and shave my head back up into view and be like, oh, hi, I, I must have dropped my pen. Yeah, and dropped my pen. I was hiding under the desk because I had figured out my camera was on. <laughs> so either put a post-it note over your camera so you know when it's on or not on, but this is important to your virtual selling and doing these meetings, all right? Okay, I'm gonna give you two main tips today, uh, and then I'm gonna give you a bunch of best practices. I truly do and I want to you know, hear from you if you have questions. Uh, and uh, J Judy is asking, um, do you teach how to Zoom? Sure, I mean, we can do a session on how to Zoom, no problem. Uh, using any of these tools is just as, yeah, you, you need to know how to use the tools. So if that's something we wanna do, we could certainly do it uh, because each of these platforms is a little bit different and <laughs> it's not easy. And what I do find, and you'll see what I'm getting ready to tell you here in a minute, is you want to stick with one that you feel comfortable with and that you know how to use. Because ultimately, tip number one is if you want to be successful with virtual selling, you've got to make the other person feel comfortable, safe, and supported. In other words, you have to make it feel like, don't worry, I've got this. Now, some of you may have to fake that a little bit until you start feeling that way, <laughs> but whatever platform or piece of technology you're gonna use, one of the ways that you help other people feel comfortable and relaxed is you have to take charge of it and say, I've got you. No matter what happens, don't you worry, I've got you. Now, the only way that can be true is if you feel safe and comfortable with the platform. So first of all, let me ask you, what works best for you? Okay, so like it, right now, I want you to go over to the chat box. If you haven't found the chat box, look in your Zoom toolbar and you'll see a white bubble, like a little chat type bubble with the word chat. You can click on that. It should open the chat box for you. I want you to go over there right now and just go ahead and type in and tell me which of the platforms, is it FaceTime? Is it Zoom? Okay, I got Sophia has come in with a vote for Zoom. Thank you. Is it GoToMeeting? 
Okay, what is it that, or something that I haven't listed here, doesn't matter to me, but each of you probably has something that you use more than others, other platforms, and that's what I want you to offer. If somebody says, I'm not comfortable meeting you in person right now, or I have a relative that's out of town, or COVID aside, I'm a military buyer, and I can't be there right now in person, but I'd really like to tour this listing. What are you gonna offer them? So what I want you to do is ask the other person what works best for you, and then I want you to give them a menu, multiple choice to choose from. Because I don't want them to give you an answer of something you're not comfortable with, okay? So then you're gonna go FaceTime, Zoom, go to meeting, like whatever you are comfortable using. And I want you to always throw in there or would a good old fashioned phone call just do it? Because some people, if, they're, if they are truly not comfortable with a virtual conversation, might not want to admit that to you, they might be embarrassed, but if you give them an out, they would just as soon talk to you on the phone and they're fine. And then it's simpler for everyone. So I want you to give them a menu of options, but I only want you to offer them an option that you feel comfortable with, because guess what? Hit your tech support. <laughs> if you can't troubleshoot somebody else using Zoom and you offer to do a Zoom meeting, it's gonna be a meltdown. <laughs> it's not gonna work for you, okay? If you're just getting started with virtual communications, start with FaceTime. FaceTime is the easiest one by far. Now, I apologize, I am not an Android phone user. If anybody is Andrew, uh, an Android phone user out there, can anybody confirm if, if Android phones have FaceTime or is that just iPhones? Honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. If anybody wants to put that in the chat to me and let me know, that would be very helpful. Uh, but I know for a fact, if yeah, okay, it's just an iPhone. Thanks, Jennifer. I thought so. So those of you with iPhones, one of the easiest things would be FaceTime. Just FaceTime. And in order to learn how to do that, start FaceTiming your relatives, people. I want you to organize a family FaceTime for this weekend. Cousins, uh, aunt and uncle, mom and dad, adult children, teenage children, whomever, you need to organize a group FaceTime until you have done at least three family group FaceTimes. Please do not offer to do this in your professional capacity. Because once you have done this three times with your family members, trying to get all of them on, trying to hear them all, trying to help them all get situated, no mom, move the camera up, up, up mom, I'm still looking up your nose, up mom. Until you've done that, you're not ready, okay? So start with FaceTime. If you're pretty good with FaceTime, maybe try a Zoom. If you're pretty good with Zoom, maybe you step up to like go to meeting, okay? These are all options and levels, but whatever you're gonna do, you wanna do it first, you've gotta start practicing. Practice on your family members, okay? Because remember, your family members are gonna be more like your average buyers out there. Maybe they work in an office where they do office Zooms, but maybe they don't. Right? There's a lot of people who, if they don't work in an office type environment, they've never been on a Zoom meeting in their life. They don't understand how it works. So this is why I like to offer a multiple choice to someone and let them tell me what they are most comfortable with as far as the technology goes. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just looking over here. Questions so far. Now you'll notice a lot of how I'm trying to keep this interactive and keep you from George Costanza napping under your desk is I'm trying to talk to you directly and then ask you to respond to me in chat. That's another thing that I do. Now, most of you, I think what we're talking about here isn't a webinar to a group of people. Really our focus today is one-on-one -on -one virtual selling like you and a prospect who's interested in your one of your homes for sale or engaging you as their realtor, something like that. If you want tips on more of formal presenting, like I'm doing to you today, 
I do have another webinar I just recorded on that last week that I'm happy to send you the link to. Uh, so you, that's a little bit different than what we're doing today. So I think most of you would know if the other person was napping on the other end. But if you do find yourself in a group situation, using the chat and communicating like this is kind of a good way to keep people interacting. Okay, so if you are currently still awake, I would like you to go to the chat box now and type awake. That would be very helpful. Okay. Uh, next one. If, thank you. Oh, yay. We've got several people awake. Awesome. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next tip. If someone says to you, well, I've never done Zoom before, d let's, no, <laughs> just say no. That, seriously, um, you, don't be the one to teach them. I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm just saying, like you're wanting to have a productive conversation. You're wanting them to uh, come see, make another appointment to come see this home in person, or they're, you're wanting them to allow you to list their property. You're not in Zoom training school. So if they say to you, no, I have never used that before, no worries. How about FaceTime? <laughs> or is there something you're comfortable that you have used before? Okay. Um, so I think don't just eliminate it off the list. Don't try to force anything. Okay, next step. I learned this tip from David Hagen, who is the regional VP of sales for a really large builder in uh, throughout South Carolina. The name will come to me in a minute. I just went blank for a minute. It'll come back to me. Um, but David, on one of our builder town halls, which I'll tell you more about in just a minute, you're all welcome to attend and participate in those mentioned that what their agents are doing is they're actually sending out prior to the conversation. So let's say you set up a virtual sales call with a prospect um, for Wednesday at one o'clock on Wednesday morning lands in the inbox of that person, very specific, detailed, written instructions never ever 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 assume that somebody has the link to get in the meeting or the phone number they don't you may have said it three million times in advance right judy we sent out these links how many times but you should prepare yourself that nobody will ever have the link so right before the meeting you want to resend all that information but bonus points if you'll do a little video slash screen recording to help explain to the person how to get into the meeting. That's what David Hagen taught me, is he has their whole team doing these little screen recordings for all virtual appointments. I don't know how many of you saw the screencast that I created to walk everybody through the steps of donating and registering for today's event. If you didn't get to see it, just send me or Judy an email, we'll send you the link. It'll kind of give you a sample of what I'm talking about. I used a tool called Snagit by TechSmith. It's about a $50 tool, one-time fee, uh, but there are free versions uh, or free tools. Loom is an example. And these are tools that you can use to record your screen and just walk somebody through click here and you talk out loud you narrate and it records your audio and records your mouse as you click and i think judy would tell you that she and i you know this was complicated today because uh we needed to collect money for the event but we wanted it to be able to be a tax write-off so i didn't want to just use my paypal and then cut her a check which i would have been happy to do but then it wouldn't have been tax deductible to you so we're like, okay, we wanted to go to GoFundMe, but yet we got to get them a link to get in the meeting, <sighs> right? Our head was about to explode. So we finally settled on what we were going to do for this. And it was hard for me to communicate to her what we needed to do. I think though, once I recorded this video, Judy, and you can comment in the comments, I think it was a lot simpler to understand, hey, I need you to go here, click here. Then I need you to go here, click here. 
right? So it's just a two minute little video that I recorded right off my screen using Snagit. But like I said, you could also use a tool like Loom or a third option would be a tool like BombBomb. Yes, that's a real name of a real company. They do. <laughs> so there are tons of options out there of what you can do, but if you really, oh, Tammy loves bomb bombs, right? They're awesome, right? So if you need to really communicate steps to someone of what you need them to do, click, 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 a little screen recording like this, and you send it the morning of, and this is how we're gonna get into Zoom, and this is how we're gonna do it, perfect. Uh, now, I do these so simply and quickly, I don't even try to include video in them of my face, but you could do that, but that means I'd have to put my makeup on. So we only wanna do that on webinar days, right? So I just record the audio of me talking and the clicking to show what I need somebody to do. And it is a very effective and better way to communicate complicated tech steps to people. Okay, uh, yes, Linda, we can send the screen recording. Um, no, it'll give you a good example of exactly what I'm recommending, okay? All right, tip number two. When you're doing virtual, here's the balance we've got to strike, and it's a hard one, okay? We want to convey warmth, but what's challenging about this is we're doing it through a lens. You know, if you were here in person, I would hug you, <laughs> right? I'm a hugger. Like you would feel my energy. You would see that I'm giving you eye contact, like all of that in person that's just so lost right now. And I'm not saying that virtual will ever replace it. It's just, this is what we have for now and we're gonna make the best of it. But it's not enough for them just to like you with the warmth side. We also want them to see and feel through the lens that you're competent at what you're doing. Many, many years ago, uh, two researchers, uh, Amy Cuddy and Susan Fisk, came up with this concept that all of us are basically ju uh, judged on an axis of warmth and competence. Warmth and competence. And you can be very warm but you wouldn't trust that person to watch your child or take your dog for a walk, right? Because you're like, I don't know what'll happen. I love her, but oh my word, you know, uh, couldn't get out of the rain if their life depended on it. And then you know people who are super competent, but on your very worst day of your life, there is no way you're calling up this person for support, right? Virtual communication, really all communication, but it's even, it's I think more so true when we're separated and we can't really feel each other's energy in person, we've got to have this blend. This is something I've struggled with my whole life. I've got warmth off the flipping chart. I've got personality plus radiating from every fingertip. But when I get really, really nervous, especially in front of large groups of people, like at the sales rally, where I don't know, my whole career is on the line, because if you mess up in front of 2000 people at the International Builder Show, they'll never invite you back. Uh, yeah, I get really, really nervous. And what happens for me is that adrenaline overshoots on the warmth side and kind of can make me too silly, too over the top what almost appears to some people to be very disingenuous. Although honestly, no, that's really just kind of me. Uh, for those of you that attended the town hall yesterday, I was fighting it so hard and it still came off a little too hot of where I really wanted to be, but I was just really so excited to have everybody together and to have such a good turnout and to have um, an idol of mine to be interviewing. So here you are, you've got to try to find this balance. So whenever I dial it in a bit on the warmth and bring up the confidence level of what I'm talking about, oh, that's where I find we really are most impactful. I want to show you a couple screenshots. Now I want you to keep in mind that warmth and competence is absolutely impacted by people's implicit bias that all of us have. I mean, 
I could be my, doing my level best to hit both warmth and competence, but the way that you perceive me might affect that, and that's completely out of my control. And that I recognize, and I hope you will too. So it's not that we worry about what others think of us. We just do our thing and we do our best. But while we're doing it, I think if we can hit right in the middle of those two axes, we're going to do best. So here is somebody who is coming across on a video FaceTime. Let's pretend this is a realtor by the name of, I don't know, Judy. And let's pretend we are FaceTiming with Judy about a potential home. We don't feel comfortable leaving our home or we have a high risk family member. So we're still quarantining strong. And we're talking to Judy here. Well, I think we would all agree that Judy is coming across with a great deal of warmth here, right? Of course, smiling, looking straight into the camera, looking amazing. If we were to take this view of Judy, I think on this screenshot, we would say coming across with a lot of competence, right? Got our papers, got our pen, we've got a more background that looks more like an office. Remember what this one looked like, right? Sitting on the couch, whereas this one, I mean, this high on that, but what if we combined it? Do you see the difference? Now look at Judy, the realtor here, right? There we go. Now I'm seeing warmth and competence. Okay. Some of you are missing the mark on this and you don't know it just because you don't know what to do in the virtual world. And that's where I wanna help you. Yes, John Mortal, I am a hugger. Yes, I am. <laughs> For, okay, warmth and competence, number one, you've got to look into the camera. I have got my eyes laser beamed in on my webcam. Every time I look away to check the chat or to check my slide or to check my secondary monitor, I break eye contact with you. Is it nearly as warmth and impactful if I'm looking down at the slides? Nope. You gotta look into the camera. So that means you have to know where your camera is. So if you're using a web camera, it's a little easier. If you're looking at your phone and you're using your phone, you've got to know where are you looking, <laughs> okay? So some of you don't look into the camera and you don't mean to or not mean to. Some of you aren't sure if you're supposed to. In some of my early Zooms, I'm looking into the camera so intently. <laughs> what? It's just such. All right, so we don't want to scare into a like, serial killer death sir. Um, we do want to gently stay, look straight in. When I do meetings where I can see every face is like the brain inch on my screen, I will move all of those videos and I make them kind of small actually on purpose. And I move them all the way to the very top of my screen, right underneath the lens of my webcam that's mounted on top of my computer. Why? Because I want to be able to glance at those and see the other people in the meeting without breaking too much eye contact with my webcam. If you've got your video of your other meeting participants down here in the corner, whenever you're looking at it or tempted to look at it, you're gonna break your own eye contact. So just a little tip there, do whatever it takes um, to train yourself. Don't look at yourself on the video, look into the lens of the camera and smile. Nothing is going to stay warmth like a smile, and the smile is everything. So we absolutely want to smile as we look into the camera. We want to smile as we talk, which is an, a skill you can learn how to do. It's not easy, but you can learn how to do it. When you are in these meetings, you want to take notes and look like you're paying attention. <laughs> Every time you look down to do your phone, you're breaking eye contact. And it's as much as, as saying, whatever you're saying is not important. I don't need to listen. I don't need to pay attention. Look into the camera, keep looking into the camera, smile, get your pen out, take some notes, right? And when you do break contact with the camera, tell me why. So I'm gonna check the chat. Catherine uh, chatted in, this is a good point, to ask the customer how they want the information to be delivered. That's exactly right, Catherine, you nailed it. It's about them. How do they want it to be delivered? And then we wanna perfect our abilities 
practicing on our family members <laughs> until we're ready to go live, right? So make sure that you're uh, taking notes, avoiding any distractions. I turn my phone on silent. I have an office, the, the door that closes. Um, thanks to my sweet husband, I actually have an on-air sign on my door that slides across. And when it slides across, the red says on air, do not open door. <laughs> and when you slide it back across, it's green and it says off air, come on in. And this is how my family members know whether they are supposed to open that door or not. <laughs> um, be prepared. You know, there's nothing like showing up to a, any meeting, but a virtual meeting. And remember, I want you to learn to think, even these virtual one-on-ones, it's a meeting. You're having a meeting with this person. What's the agenda? What are we covering today? What's the time frame? Start on time, end early. You know, be respectful of all of those things. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are doing your Zooms or your FaceTimes in your yard working t-shirts. <laughs> I need you to stop. <laughs> now, pants are optional. Just don't stand up if you're sitting down, if, depending on where your web camera is aimed, okay? Pants are optional, but I do need you to wear a professional looking top. Uh, when I showed you, let me go back and just show you one of the differences. Uh, one second. When I showed you warmth and competence, let's go back to here. See this night? Okay, see, now look at this compared to Look at this, yeah, with the collared shirt. There's a number of things that go into making this look more competent, but she still looks very warm with her beautiful smile, okay? So I know we're all in a new world here, but for me, what I'd suggest, and I broke my own rule today with a little bit of the stripe, but honestly, bright, solid colors look great. Just remember, they're only gonna see about this much of you. I have witnessed a number of realtors <laughs> do like Facebook lives or live streams and they're wearing um, sleeveless tops that like go across here and you only see this much up and they look naked. They do, they, I'm like, are you wearing a shirt? Because you can't see the top of the shirt. Or it's a cold shoulder top and there's two straps right here and they have long hair and the hair covers this. And so again, all I'm getting is shoulders <laughs> and I'm like are you wearing a top like what's happening there and the thing about the way you're dressed when you're on camera is it's just it'll distract people from your message that's it like it doesn't really matter what their opinion of you is it doesn't matter that you're trying to please them it's not any of those things but when you want to be an effective communicator What's most important is that you, the, the receiver is able to hear and understand the message and that nothing about what you're wearing or your background behind you or the noise in the background, you just don't want anything to distract from them being able to receive and understand your message. That's how we make it about them and not about you. Okay. Some best practices as we wind our time down here together. One of the things, the reason you're struggling with this, if you've tried any kind of virtual presentation or communication is you crash land into it. And I can say that because I do the same thing. So guilty right here. I now have a practice where I don't agree to do any kind of virtual anything unless I can block amount, a, a certain amount of time in front of it on the calendar. In other words, I do not go from running around whatever I'm supposed to, uh, doctor's appointment with son or take dog to vet or whatever it is I'm supposed to do out in the world and then say, I'll be back and I'll be by such and such a time. Mm -mm. If it's cutting it close, I reschedule it. Okay. If you're gonna do like, for example, a virtual selling FaceTime appointment with someone, I think you need to block on your calendar at least 15 to 30 minutes prior to that starting. 
Why? Well, because we have to adjust our lighting or we might need to spruce up our background or we might need to get a little lipstick or have a chance to swap our shirts so we don't look like we're topless. You know, you, you don't want to crash land into it. If you're doing an actual virtual meeting, like with your company or all your team members, or you're going to host a webinar like this, I had an hour blocked prior to the hour that I logged in early. Okay, so I am talking a block of time. I call it prep. So like on my calendar today, from 10 a.m. till 11 a.m. was blocked webinar prep hour because that whole hour gave me enough time to stop whatever else I was doing and get situated. And that's not like when you write the thing that was done long before. This is just literally prep everything around me and prep me to go live. Then you want to log in early. Uh, if you're going to be do, like doing it over FaceTime, I think five minutes prior, you are completely situated. You are ready to go and you are ready to press FaceTime on your phone. And you don't do it five minutes early because then you'll literally start calling them too early. If you're using like Zoom or GoToMeeting, you can log in early. And on those, a minimum of a half an hour, if not a full hour. So there's prep time plus log in early time. All of this time cushions you and ensures that you are ready for success. It's a long time to wait if everything goes perfectly. <laughs> it's not never enough time if all the technology melts down. Never enough time. Oh, yes, Judy just reminded me, we have door prizes to give away today. Yes, we do. Thank you for reminding me, Judy. All right, so I want, oh, we have three of them. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, for the first door prize today, uh, I'm with the first person to chat in and tell me what was, what was, let me think, hmm, tip number one. What was tip number one? I said you want to do what? What do you want to do? Make it about them. Tammy Bryant is a winner. Good job. Okay, uh, Judy, chat in to Tammy and tell her what she has won and how she goes about collecting that. The next prize in just a moment. Okay. Next one, plan your space. Where are you gonna do this virtual conversation from? Now, I ended up uh, doing a complete makeover on my office again on March the 12th when the whole world came to a stop and every single speaking engagement I had booked for the year canceled and asked for their deposit back. Not kidding, in 24 hours, it all went away. I figured out pretty quickly I was gonna need a really good looking virtual studio. So my husband and I set to work to make over my office and came up with what you see. Now you may not need to go to this length or to go to this much effort, but you do want it to look professional. So think about where is a place that you could do this and consider setting a dedicated space so that you're not readjusting lights you, your stuff kind of set, stay set up and set together. Uh, so I said, consider creating a studio, but I don't mean for you to go to thousands of dollars and a lot of trouble. I just mean, could you find, you know, a bookshelf and a table and kind of just configure it or just something that looks nice. Um, if you don't have that, then those folding Soji screens, the six foot ones, uh, you can buy them for about $100 to $125 on Amazon. Those work really, really well. Uh, and you just put that behind you and they can't see anything that's behind that. So if you need to hide all your laundry or other coworkers or whatever you need to hide, a screen can help you with that. But just think about what is gonna be behind you. Is the space quiet? That's really important you know, whatever you can do to limit noise and interruptions, and the lighting. You really do want soft, natural lighting. Um, if you think uh, about it, you want lighting coming at your face, on your face, not behind you, okay? If you've got a window behind you, is there a way you could flip your desk 
<laughs> or is there a way to block that light? Because if you if it comes in behind you, it's really going to throw the camera off. Okay. The next one is elevate your webcam. So um, a lot of you are using a laptop. You're using your webcam that's built into your laptop, and it's basically too low, and it's looking up this way. There's not a man or woman on earth that looked good this way. It's just not flattering to any of us, and it doesn't look as professional. I'm gonna stop my slide screen share for a second, and I'm going to open my, um, yes, my Google Chrome here, and I'm gonna find, I've got some, and I'll send all these links to you after we are done today. But for example, like right now, my computer, so that I can stand up and talk, and I can be more animated, can have more energy by standing, I bought this, almost this exact one virtual desk converter that's standing on top of my desk, so now my webcam is eye level and it's not too low, okay? Um, if you're using your webcam built into your laptop, you could use one of these, all right? This is a laptop stand that allows you to raise and lower the laptop and get that camera up. You want that camera straight on just about eye level with your eye to, to look as good as possible. None of us need three chins more than we already have from gaining 20 pounds in COVID, all right? So that will help you. Um, if you need help with lighting, if the room you're in is really dark or doesn't have natural, soft natural light coming in, you can do one of these ring lights. Um, this is also really useful because you can put your phone in it and use it as a tripod. So if you're gonna do FaceTime using your phone, you put your phone in this so it's nice and steady, turn on your uh, light, and now you've got soft light coming right at your face with your phone in it, right? So if you're not gonna use a webcam, but you're gonna use a phone, this is good. This one does a desktop version to sit on your desk or a standing up tall if you wanna be able to stand up and do your videos that way, okay? Let's see, what else do I have for you here? Um, this is a good, if you, if you wanted to just get a tripod for your phone and put that on your desk, or you could get one that was a full size to stand up, you just need to think about, do I want to sit down for this conversation? Do I need to be able to stand up? If you're going to be walking around, you need to walk through a home with someone, then one of these, yes, this would be incredibly helpful to you. This is called a gimbal stabilizer, okay? You pop your phone in it and you hold it by the handle here so that you can just walk around and film and it'll hold that phone very, very steady for you. There'll still be a little bit of shaking, but not nearly as much, okay? So just think about could I create a space where I could kind of get me a light set up? I could have my tripod. That's, I think you get better at this if you can set it up, leave it, and forget it. And then build in your time before you're to start. Your stuff's already set up. You're going to pop your phone in, think about what you're going to say, and you're ready to go. But if you're recreating this every single time, it's going to be time consuming and there'll be more opportunities for mistakes. All right, so questions on either the equipment here or some of these best practices. And we have a couple of more giveaways that we want to give away. Uh, tell me more. What else? What are your questions? I know some of you had, I saw them here in the chat box. What questions do you have for me? Okay, don't go all at once. All right, now this, what I'm doing here, is a brand new feature of Zoom uh, called Virtual Slides as a Background. So I've taken my slideshow, and in the settings, under the Share Screen settings, I have selected 
share slides as background. And what it does is literally make my slides full screen and put me on top like I'm the weather person. That's kind of cool, right? So Shannon, can you see that? Does it look good? Does it cause any kind of delay? All right, I'm getting in some questions. This is good, this is good. It looks great, thank you, Sophie. I know, this is kind of interesting, right? So I'm just gonna click through and get to the slide that I was on. And while I'm doing that, how did I figure out how to do all of this? Um, embarrassing trial and error, Linda, unfortunately. I have made every mistake in the book uh, and embarrassed myself along the way. I will also say, like, for example, I decided to double down on Zoom and just, I'm going to be really good. Like, I picked a channel that I wanted to be good at. And so I've probably watched every Zoom YouTube tutorial that they've created. Um, I keep doing it, even though I feel like sometimes I totally mess it up and screw it up. Uh, and so, you know, I just, I do that. When somebody comes along and says, well, can you use GoToMeeting? I can, but typically what I'll do is say, well, do you have anybody there that can run the meeting in the background since GoToMeeting is not the one I do every single day? And, and that's very helpful, right? And so some of you, if you're just getting started at this, maybe you do want to ask and, and recruit an assistant producer, somebody who's going to be behind the scenes. Maybe they're not going to be seen on camera but they're going to be behind the scenes just troubleshooting or helping you along the way uh, to make sure that it goes smoothly. Okay. Um, all right. Here's the slide I was on. If you're walking around, use a phone stabilizer. We had a question about that. Um, yes, Katrina. Hi, Katrina. I'm so glad you're here. Um, yes. Uh, you do want to put your phone on do not disturb if you're going to use your phone for a FaceTime or a Zoom or whatever, because it can ring, you can get text messages, you could get uh, Facebook alerts, you could get all kinds of things happening on your phone that you might not want the other person to see or hear. Uh, whenever I get ready to start a webinar, I actually have where to go. It's right here. Um, I like a little checklist. Oh, yeah, see it because of the green screen. Not crazy. This is weird, y'all. Okay, so, so here's my checklist of all my stuff. And I go through, I leave this. It's a stand up uh, notepad hold that I leave up. And I go through and got things on the list and not disturb as those things on my, my pre-o checks that I do. Last thing I want to tell you, and then we do need to wrap up. I appreciate you guys sticking with me here. Is really, though, I don't want you to get too hung up on video. The most important thing is they can hear you. The audio has to be good, no matter what you're doing. So for that, I strongly recommend, I've got an AirPods, but you could use good old fashioned wired earbuds, uh, you know, like these, um, whatever makes sense for you, but you've got to have good audio. Don't just try to do audio via a uh, speaker, through the uh, speaker in your computer or the phone speaker. You'll get feedback. You'll pick up a lot of extraneous noise. I use a uh, microphone that I strongly recommend that I plug into my computer. Hold on, we'll pull it up for you on Amazon and show it to you. Called a Blue Yeti. That's like Bigfoot Blue Yeti. All right, so hang on. Let's change my screen share. Share, go here, share screen. Here we go. Google Chrome, got it. Okay, yes, a blue Yeti right here. Okay, blue Yeti. Not expensive, plugs in with the USB right into your computer, will give you awesome sound. Um, if you, again, though, if you're on the move because you're a realtor and you're out and about, then really the AirPods or the earbuds would work great. But you do wanna make sure that you have really good sound. Okay, 
we have two more giveaways. Um, the first one, uh, Judy asked about how do we get realtors to attend virtual caravans? And this is what's hard. And as you guys see today by attendance today, I mean, we promoted this very heavily, but everybody is so busy selling right now and setting records um, that they're so busy being successful that it's hard to get great attendance at things. I think, Judy, that the way that you go about getting attendance is uh, you, you have to promote it. And what I find, email is the best. Having an email list and just clobbering it uh, with emails about this coming up. Social media is good for creating buzz and awareness, but I don't think it puts butts in seats, whether it's a live event or a virtual event, as much or as well as email does. So how would you go about doing that? Well, that's where if you were to do one of the bomb bomb videos, a video of you talking in the video, inviting them to this virtual caravan, and you were to send that out via email, I am prime Judy Hicks here, and I am personally inviting you to my next virtual caravan. You're going to see this and see this and get this prize. I'm gonna not only open that, I'm gonna play it, and then I'm gonna know, hey, this woman's got something going on, I am going to uh, attend it. And so that's it. Now, the other thing is you want to record it while you're doing it because people's ability to attend live, they mean well, but they aren't able, but they will watch the recordings. So when you send it back out via email using the recording, you'll reach another 20, 30% that maybe couldn't attend live. Okay. Um, yes. Sophia, yes, uh, email reminders for meetings. Zoom is great about that. That's another reason I like that platform, but most of the platforms do it where they'll send you an email reminder one week, one day, one hour before, and it's pretty hard to escape. A little annoying, but hard to escape. Okay, two more prizes to go. Uh, somebody tell me, first one to chat in, what is your top takeaway or action item from the tips I've given you today. All right, actually we'll take the first two to write in with an action item or takeaway. This is John Wardle's uh, door prize. Oh, Meredith Oliver book, lucky you, lucky you. <laughs> ah, prepping one hour before the video. Yes, Greg, I am telling you, it will save you because you'll just be more calm, you'll be more prepared, You'll have your lighting on, you'll have tested your audio, you'll be ready to go. And, you know, again, this is not when we're writing the meeting agenda. This is not when we're prepping slides. This is literally preparing you and your space to go live. Okay, the next one, uh, Judy wrote in $25 gift card from David Weekly Homes. Ooh, Denise, thank you. Using your AirPods or earbuds versus just using the speaker on your computer. Trust me. When you just use the speaker on your computer, you also, to the other person, it's exhausting to listen to because it has that kind of hollow speaker sound, which is just wearing. Now, I'm doing um, seven, eight Zooms a day. <laughs> so by the time I do those, each of those are an hour or more. Yeah, so for me, definitely having these in and not feeling like I'm listening to that on speaker all day long every day really helps. You probably aren't doing that many, but still, for you and the listener, it will really help if you bring it down. Uh, and remember, if you've got a good mic and you've got your AirPods, you don't have to shout either. You can talk a lot more conversationally to really show both that warmth and competence access that we talked about. Okay, so Denise just won her own door prize, Judy says. Um, Judy, I can bring you back on if you want to wrap up and, and say a few words and uh, bring us back together. So I'm going to hit ask to start video and ask to unmute. And there we go. There you are. Take your gun out. 
<laughs> we can hear oh, you. God, I thought I could get it done in time. <laughs> good job. Good job. Oh, God. Um, so thank you, everybody, for attending this. This is so exciting. Uh, I've got, I think, four pages of notes. So I'm very, very excited about it. And, and it kind of spurs me on to do a couple of things that I've been thinking about doing, like Bomb Bomb or one of the other things. Um, but this is just really, really, really good information for everyone. I can't thank everyone enough for the love and support. Diane asked me to please share with you that that she is so grateful. Tom is so grateful. And something that she said to me the other day, which really touched my heart, she said, Judy, we feel so loved. And I said, you are loved. And even people that, it is one of the things I said to Meredith that I've said to the kids at Daniel for the 20 some years I've been working over there. Sometimes it's hard for people to realize that people that don't know them want to help. And that goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, we love people because of who we are. And when I say that to the youth at Daniel, I say, we can love you and want to help you and not know you because that's who we are. And I think that's who all of, all of us on this are. And some of us have known Diane for a very long time. Some people don't know her but they made a donation because they know me or they know you or they know Kathy or Denise and we're so grateful for it and I just can't thank everybody enough. I really don't know what to do about Denise uh, winning her own door prize though. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, well, it they, happens. I don't know. It we'll, <laughs> we'll figure that out. Treat yourself, girl, I guess. Yeah, so, right? Fabulous. Um, good. Well, I'll tell you two things before you take off. Uh, I am hosting a home builder growth summit. It's going to be an all day virtual live stream event on November the 10th. So save the date. If you want to learn more about selling and marketing new homes in this era, um, registration, sponsorships, all that stuff will be coming out soon. So November 10th, and then I did mention, um, oops, I turned off my mic, hold on. Um, there we go. Um, a couple times I mentioned the call. And so, yeah, if you are uh, in the home building industry and you would like to just connect with other industry leaders, if you go to Facebook, uh, Builder Town Hall, then just uh, click join. I'll approve you to join the group. And then you'll see when our next meetings are. That's all free and complimentary. And it's just a great way to get more connected and get, you know, part of the industry and part of the leadership team of the industry. So, yeah, Builder Town Hall. Denise just posted to give that gift to someone else. Okay. To give her well, yeah. What, uh, how do we want to do it? Anybody else have another? Yeah. Um, another takeaway. Did anybody else have another one you want to write in real quick and we'll get you in there? Okay. Judy, I'm going to send you the slide deck and the links to all the different Amazon things. I'm not affiliated with any of them. I'm not, there's no, it's just the list of stuff that I use that I like that I'm happy to pass on to anybody else who wants to. Okay upgrade their tech. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any of anything else? Any other questions or there we go. There's the town hall group. I was struggling to get that on the screen there. Um, yeah. Builder town halls. There you go. Right. So feel free to join us. Great community of folks. Okay. Um, anything else? We good? We're a little over time. Yeah, please do. I had so much to share. I couldn't stop talking. Well, you, have, you have so many neat little things like this. Are you using Canva to create these or do you have a team? Because it, the thought dawned on me the other day with you being, you know, working from home like we all are, you you maybe were accustomed to having a staff that would come in and help you and you would look over their shoulder and you would do things. Are you doing all of this yourself? Um. So I do have a team of people who do all of our home builder marketing services. Like we have, we've, we've always run as a remote company. So um, we were not in ever in an office together. We've always been remote. There's about 10 of us that all work together on my team. But 
I'm not going to bog them down with stuff like this that I'm doing, um, you know, because they've got stuff to do for like Brighton Homes that's due. And so I'm not going to bog them down. So in those cases, yes, you're right, Judy, I do use Canva. Uh, I can okay. log in here. And so when we needed a quick little graphic uh, for today's event, I logged right in here and I made this using, yes, nice. and using, doing yeah. that because I like, like learning I said, how to do I it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to uh, bog them down on paid deliverables, right? So a lot of my stuff, the builder town halls have all of that. Yeah, I do it myself in here. What's well, good. Everything you do is very good. And I was wondering, man, I wonder if she, I use Canva, but it's kind of a love hate relationship because my, my brain doesn't necessarily work that way. But so, yeah. So well, anybody else get that next uh, door prize? What is that again? Okay. Linda Moore, it is a tool called Canva, C A N V A dot com. Canva. Mm -hmm. Let's give her that $25 Amazon gift card from Denise Patrick Hall. Linda Mar, you're a winner. You're a winner. Hey. And so with the, I do the paid version, which allows me to have um, the brand kit in here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm able to upload my logo, my fonts that are go with my brand, all my brand colors that the designer told me what they were because I didn't know what they were, but I can save all this in here. So every time I go to create something, boom, it's all here in my Canva account and I can create things on brand very easily and quickly. I'm not just starting over from scratch every time. It's all, it's all very good. Your everything <laughs> looks up. Uh, uh, oh, she said she picked someone. Oh God. <sighs> Thank you. Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, you know, if anybody can you know, spread the word about the GoFundMe on the GoFundMe page on Tom's GoFundMe page, there is a big yellow share button. All it would take is if each of us then take, you know, after today, we hit that share button out to our Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, our Twitter, whatever, Instagram, uh, and, you know, you'll be able to kind of say, hey, I attended this great webinar today. Uh, we can send you the link to it. Just give us a $5 donation or something. And Judy and I will be happy to send the link if it's something you want to offer to people. More than happy to do that or share. I'd like more than $5, though. So. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to overvalue the information, yeah. but we're just yeah. saying share it out. Uh, you'd be surprised how many donations can just come in from just a quick little share and you saying, look, this is something that's important to me and I would just appreciate your consideration on it. I, I would say that if they made a $25 donation, I would be willing to give them a copy of the, of the, there you um, go. Well, that's right. uh, of, the, um, of the thing. And I know that there were some site agents and realtors that really wanted to do it, but, and I get it. I, I, I like one of the things that you said, uh, don't crash land into the meeting because some, some of, for some of us, it's our style. And this is also about training and discipline if you're going to do something. It is. It is. And, and I can only, honestly, Judy, from that, I speak from 100% experience. I literally crash land into everything. I do almost everything I do on instinct and gut. But when I slow it down for a second, when I bring down Meredith on crack into more warmth and competence, even... And I set up and I take a breath and I take block the time on the calendar and I glide in. The result is a thousand percent better every time. So Good stuff. yeah. All right. All right. I know everybody's got to go. Thank you guys so much. Judy, I'll make the recording and slides and everything available to you for you to give out as needed. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Talk Thank to you, you later. Everybody. Okay, bye. bye.